right so next let us approach to the shock capturing shock capturing and shock fitting methods but this is the not exactly we were interested about the shock methods right now at this stage but we were actually interested to discuss more about that why this e conservative equations we are stating it as in a weak and the strong conservative form and what is the approach when we are going into the flow phase so let us take the why is the shock you know why why can't we go in a regular phenomena is where is the shock phenomena occurring in fluid flow considers consider the energy transfer is happening in that and all the fluid flow properties need to be varied when there is a shock effectively is occurring in that but as far as the approach with respect to the cfd is concerned as far as the approach with respect to the cfd is concerned there are basically there are the two effect, uh, two approaches maybe in the current days there are many approaches more than uh, more than n approach author of anderson it is that there are two methods available in that one it is a shock capturing approaches and the other one is a shock fitting approach what exactly is the shock capturing approaches is as you can see in the image the free stream boundary conditions the free stream boundary conditions i have set in such a way that the free stream boundary conditions have set in such a way that my shock should be available inside this domain only my shock should be available inside this domain only that is a that is a beauty of this particular method is so the shock is available inside this one only so that means i am defining my domain so i am mixing I, am, I can capture that effectively that shock wave. and what exactly this shock wave is so the shock wave is a thin region in the fluid flow where the flow properties will vary all of a sudden and in front of the shock wave and behind the shock wave the flow properties will vary all of a sudden and the shock waves can occur above a mark number of one so that is in the supersonic flows only the shock waves will be occurring or more than 0.7 mark number only the shock waves will be occurring in that right so that that is about the shock capturing methods that is about the shock capturing method so here in the shock capturing methods the computations will be made in such that inside the domain the fluid flow will be captured so in shock capturing method so that here here they are not sure where exactly the shock is occurring remember other point is that here we are not sure where exactly the shock is occurring but we have created such a domain that shock can occur inside this domain somewhere so i don't know where exactly the shock occurring so this method when you are approaching it so that means we are not sure where exactly the shock forms so it will capture the shock within that domain it will capture the shock within the domain if even i don't know where exactly the shock forms if i don't know where exactly shock forms also this will be capturing that shock if you are given the inner boundary of that one so this will result in direct algorithm giving the shock so as far as the shock capturing approaches are concerned so here in the shock capturing approaches no need to predefine where exactly the shock is occurring we have to define only the domain for that shock wave to occur in which domain the shock wave can occur in that one if you are given the domain the algorithm will take care of predicting that shock wave and it will give us so that is a method called as a shock capturing method so that means no need to define where exactly the shock is occurring in this one so that it will give the direct result in the solution flow flow solution so the shock wave will be automatically formed and it will be captured in that so that means the users can easily take advantage of this type users can easily take this type of advantage shock capturing methods and when you are going for the shock no, no, no. when we are going for the shock fitting up in flow fields involving the shock wave so for example in your flow field that is known that it is known to you all that there is a shock wave occurring inside the fluid flow or there is a shock wave going to occur on that particular body then we have to we have to define that particular shock wave where exactly it is occurring in this case whether we may we may we may be utilizing this explicitly hook knight equations which is uh, which is in the high speed aerodynamics this rank and hook knight equations need to be adopted and initially we have to predict where can occur the shock wave so as the shock wave is of an oblique type so the oblique shock wave relation we have to find out and immediately we have to place that shock wave location so that the cfd will understand and calculate that yes at this location the shock wave is available the flow properties can be varied on so on that particular body so that it is called as a shock fitting method and when the algorithm itself will take care of the particular capturing the shock wave or predicting the shock wave then it is called a shock shock approach method and this is a shock fitting method right so these are the two methods available for the shock wave generating over the bodies right so one is the shock capturing method other was the shock fitting approach so automatically it captures in the shock capturing method and fitting method it it has to given by the user user will immediate user will give where is the location of the shock wave can occur on that particular fluid flow right let us see which one would be better if you are going for the cfd analysis if one is going for the cfd analysis which one is better even we should know about that one so for that one this slide will give you a better understanding and better approach which shock capturing method how it is being captured in that shock wave you can see there in that one the 
shakti although that is occurred so that means a large flow field has been occurred at once uh, domain so let me unite it and show you uh, here in this one in, in this one there is a better shock wave is being captured on this one shock wave is being captured in this one but at the same time if you see look at the capturing and the clarity of that particular shock wave is not so good we don't have a good clarity when you're going for the shock capturing method shock capturing method right but when you are going for the shock fitting method when you are approaching with the shock fitting method you can see the perfect shock wave where exactly the thin region has been captured on that but where user has to work on the shock fitting method where algorithm has to work on the capturing method so that means algorithm will fix it like this randomly it will algorithm will fix it whereas in the shock fitting approach the user will fix it yes i know there is a shock wave there can be the shock wave occurring on that one so in that domain he will make his mesh to be very refined mesh that means 1 by 10th of the mesh size he will reduce in the total domain or 1 by 20 of the time mesh domain he will reduce in that one so that the shock wave can be easily captured in that one so that it is called as a fitting method right so on this top images you can see even that the flow field varying with respect to the Mach number also the flow field which is varying with respect to the Mach number or an aerofoil you can see how the shock wave is getting expanded and moving out of the body right so all this analysis need to be adopted either you are going for the capturing method or you are going for the fitting method right and on the bottom of this particular so here in this one you can see the unsteady shock wave phenomena the above images are showing the steady shock wave phenomena and the bottom one it is showing the unsteady shock wave phenomena as the flow time is varying as the flow time is variable you can see how the shock wave is being moving and it is nowhere an oblique shock it is it is directly on a bow shock is being happening on that particular body so we are don't worry about the geometry but just see how the phenomena is varying with respect to the time variable so in this case see the initial shock wave has occurred it may be initially oblique but later it has been changed it into the bow shock later it has been changed to the bow shock so this this capturing method may not be so easier when we are going for the shock fit, fitting method because at each and every time frame the result of the shock wave is varying so that may not be easily captured or the user has to have to move accordingly so that means that's when we have to take care when you are going for the fitting approach and when he is not sure when one is not sure about this particular where exactly the shock wave occurs then he can adopt with a capturing method so the capturing method is a feasible one for them studied in your analysis is about this nozzle flows where the normal shocks occur where the oblique shocks occur where the shock reflections are also possible these cases you might have already prior to this one you might have investigated and that all can also be applied by these methods and you can easily capture or you can utilize in this tool you can easily capture the effectiveness of the shock wave and the flow properties and the flow property variables can be understood from this one okay so let us see let us see now talking much about the shock here so we were actually talking about the significance of the governing equation and we would like to com comment on this governing equation in order to conclude about that governing equation so let us see one such example within a shock wave which is completely unsteady and whether if you are using a now if you are using a conservative form of the equation computer flow field so when you are using the conservative form of the equation the flow field may be resulting in very smoothly that means the convergence is at a high rate can be achieved and when you are using a non-conservative form so that is by using a shock capturing method then that may result with an unpay unsatisfactory results as we have seen in the previous one how would the shock capturing effectiveness has been changed in that one so that small wiggles or disturbance may be there but theoretically we can't say that the wiggles are happening or there are some disturbances happening as far as that image is concerned so let us see in detail so when you're talking about this when you are talking about this uh, shock fitting and the shock capturing method with respect to our conservative and the non-conservative form of the equations so we are stating that with the conservative form of the equation we can smooth and the stable equations can be achieved let us see in more detail about for a shock wave so if, if i'm applying so here on the screen you can see two so that exactly at that instant so let me annotate it and show you so here at this instant there is a normal shock wave standing at this instant there is a normal shock wave standing so when the fluid flow has crossed this normal shock wave so when the fluid flow has crossed this normal shock wave how the individual equations are behaving let us see how the individual equations are behaving in this one right so in order to see when i'm applied with the conservative form of the equation for shock capturing method so my conservative form of equations have resulted in this net flux which has resulted as again so that means there is some wiggle or disturbance has occurred but when i go with the conservative form of equation my resultant equation is going very smoothly going with the other variable right so when i'm going with the other variable in the form of a non-conservative equation c so then again my non-conservative form of the equations has resulted in the unsteadiness or my conservative form of the energy equation there 
again it has resulted me in a smooth format of this equation so i am talking about here if you see this rho rho u rho and rho plus rho u square rho v square rho u square or rho v square so where what is which variables i'm talking about this i'm talking about the mass flux available inside that one so initially we are discussing about one form of the equation which i brought that is do u by do t do u by do t there i mentioned these forms a strong form of the equation for the governing and they are useful in all the cfd analysis that is only we have applied here in this one so in that equation these density density rho u rho v rho w are representing rho plus rho v square by 2 that is that is rho into e plus v square by 2 so those equations are representing the mass flux in that particular fluid flow and that mass flux is not result in that the mass flux is going very smoothly when you are applying the conservative form of the equation and when you are going for the non conservative form of the equation this mass flux resulting is in a unstable case so that means not not able to balance that particular equation that is the one why they are called as in a weak solution or the weak form of the conservative equation and the strong form of the conservative equation this is what we have been named it right so this is a strong uh, one such case we have brought it in why do we call it as a weak and the strong waves and when you are talking about the shock waves and i will leave it to the users who are interested can read about this question what is the use of or why is the use of the conservation form of the equation so important for shock capturing method because the numerical quality of the shock capturing uh, shock capturing method can be enhanced by this conservative form so that is the reason this conservative but anyway anyway both the forms can be used conservative form and the non conservative form can be used by the cfd applications but depends upon your solution you are obtain so the numerical quality of the shock capturing method will be enhanced by the use of the conservative form in contrast to the non conservative form so that is what we would like to bring out from this session related to the shock effectiveness and shock induced flow on that one see uh, before we conclude about the cfd or cfd analysis in all these cases the governing equations have been applied except this quad copter except this quad copter in all the other three cases our cfd applications are very important top left corner image is showing that moving boundary conditions if some one patch or one body is separated from that fighter aircraft how it is so that which is being deployed from that one so that is the case in this one right so that type of analysis also we need to adopt this governing equation so that means in all the cfd analysis the minimum governing equations are all this which we have discussed in this chapter or in this lecture series of unit 1 right so here you can see there are some additional and it is it is to up to the users whether you are going for the conservative form or the non conservative form based upon your applications based upon your application you can see how beautifully the aircraft has been meshed or discretized and on that one while capturing the fluid flow you can see effective capture of the fluid flow how it is effectively happening and here on the left there is a quad copter cad modeling where we are not using the cfd application where we are not using the cfd for modeling this quad copter but analysis rotor means also we have to utilize our cfd flow problems right so this is what about the cfd application